Hi, this is Bobby. Today I want to do an introductory video on a new teaching series that I'm working on and it's called Revelation Heresy. And what we're going to do is we're going to dismantle the book of Revelations, we're going to expose the evil and falsehood that's in it, and then we're going to come to recognize what the evil purposes of this book are. So just a few points of introduction. So first of all, the book of Revelation, it is heresy and it is evil. The book of Revelation, it is a mixture of truth and a mixture of lies. So you have truth and lies all mingled together. And this causes people to believe the message because they see things that ring true to them, things that they know true from the Gospels and other truth in the New Testament. So there's this huge element of truth, so that makes it believable. And then the lies are sandwiched in between. Okay, And the reality is that the best liars that's exactly what they do. They sandwich lies between layers of truth. And when you sandwich lies between layers of truth, then the message is readily received. It is easily believed because they know A is true, B is something new to them, C is true. So they believe B because A and C were true, so B must be true also, right? And so this, this sandwich technique is what we see in the book of Revelation. So there's truth, there's lie, there's truth, there's lie. And this is very confusing to our hearts because we see things that we know are true, then we see God doing evil things, and then we see something else that we know to be true, and then we're compelled to believe that evil image of God because it's sandwiched between those truths that we know are true. Okay, and that's the problem with the book of Revelation. And that's the problem with good liars is that good liars, they know how to sandwich their, their lie in the middle of truth so that people easily believe it okay so that's exactly what's happening in the book of revelation and what i want to expose is that the book of revelation it has evil purposes so number one uh, the purpose is to get christians to accept evil plagues as works of god so that they don't resist the devil and make him flee so that they don't destroy his evil works okay and actually some people they pray for plagues because they think, you know, the end is here, you know, we want the plagues to come, we want Jesus to come, we want the end time to come, I'm going to be raptured, um, let the evil get what's due to them, let the plagues come upon them. So there are actually people who pray in that manner, so they're actually praying for plagues because they think it's a good thing, they think it's a sign of the end of the times, and they think it's works of God, and so they're embracing this. And the reality is the devil has tricked them. The devil has tricked them to believe that plagues are from God um, so that they don't resist them. And he even has many of them deceived so that they're actually praying for plagues, believing that they're going to be rescued and the evil will get what's due. Okay, so he's very clever in this because he's getting us not to fight against him because Jesus has given believers all authority in heaven and on earth. Um, the Holy Spirit said that we resist the devil and he will flee. You know, we are to crush the devil. We are to destroy his works. Just like Jesus began destroying the works of the devil, well, all sons of God, all believers in Jesus, we are made sons of God. And our mission in this life is to destroy the works of the devil and to bring forth our Father's goodwill. Well, if you believe the book of Revelations, then you're inclined not to fight against the devil, but you're inclined to think it's God and accept and even welcome the devil's works. Okay, that's a huge issue. Okay, number two, another purpose of the book of Revelation is to destroy the good image of God that Jesus established in the Gospels to ruin our love for God and destroy our faith and destroy our trust in him. Okay, so in the Gospels, we see that Jesus was a lovable person. He was doing good things. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was helping people. He was not punishing them. He was not condemning them. He was feeding them. He was always doing good. He never harmed anyone. He never made anyone sick. He never punished anyone. He never cursed anyone. He never harmed anyone whatsoever. He did rebuke people with his words, but he never laid a finger on anyone. He only helped them. And, um, and so there was a very good image of God that Jesus revealed to us. Jesus is the revealed image of Father upon this earth. Okay, So as Jesus was in the Gospels, that's how he is today, yesterday, today, and forever. That's also how Father is yesterday, today, and forever. And the book of Revelations, 
will try and steer you away from that good image of God. It will try to destroy your image of God. And you're going to be filled, those who believe in the book of Revelations, they're going to be filled with doubt. You can never believe in healing when you see that Jesus is going to come again and he's going to throw them into a sickbed um, resulting in death. Okay, how can you trust him for healing if you think he's also the same one in Revelation who's going to cast you into a sickbed, right? It's, it's a different Jesus. It's a different God. And so people who read Revelations and believe it, they're confused. Their heart is confused. They have a doubt in their heart, and they're going to be ineffective in praying for healing because they never know whether this is the end time and maybe this person is supposed to be sick and maybe Jesus did it to them. Okay, so it messes up our faith. It destroys our love and trust for God. Amen. Okay, then number three, the purpose of the book of Revelations is to get Christians to blaspheme God by declaring that he is a killer, a torturer, and a plaguer. And actually what he's doing is the devil is marking these people and making them vulnerable. Okay, I'm dropping a hint here of one of the ideas I have about what the mark of the beast is. Okay, there's only one thing that um, there's one thing that Jesus said was blasphemy when we're speaking evil of the Holy Spirit. Well, what does the book of Revelations get you to do? The book of Revelations gets you to think, gets you to think that God is evil, that he's doing evil deeds, that he's pouring out wrath and curse and sickness and death and torture and torment and all these things upon the earth. So the book of Revelations creates an extremely evil image of God and it creates a blasphemous image of God in our minds if we believe it. And then if we're speaking it and declaring it, what are we doing? We're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and we've just made ourselves vulnerable to attack of Satan. Okay? So that's a huge risk of this book. Okay, number four, the purpose of the book of Revelations is to get Christians to divert their focus away from good works and waste their time trying to figure out all the symbolism, trying to figure out what's the mark of the beast, trying to figure out is it the end times yet. And there's so many people that all they do is they have an end times ministry and, and they're just constantly um, trying to predict when it is, trying to determine um, are we in the end times. They're, they're just spending so much time focused on symbolism and all these things and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Jesus, he only briefly talked about end times. He didn't make a big deal out of it. And, and so when people are all wrapped up, focused on end times, guess what they're not doing? They're not doing the works of Jesus. They're not busy helping people, loving on people, healing the sick. They're not doing the things we're supposed to be doing. Instead, they're just arguing with one another about end times doctrine. That's a complete waste of time. We should never waste any time on the end times. We don't know when it's going to be. It doesn't matter. All you need to know is... Am I in right standing with God, yes or no? And if you are, you have nothing to worry about, so move on. Okay, that's all we need to know about end times. Anything more than that is a waste of time. Okay, so these right here, these are the evil purposes of the book of Revelations, which the devil is trying to accomplish. All right? Now, let me show you some of the topics we're going to cover as we begin working on this teaching series. So I've got 14 things listed so far, and maybe I'll cover all of them. Maybe I'll add some things, so we'll see how that goes. So first of all, multiple times in the New Testament, we are warned about visions from angels. And the entire book of Revelations is a vision from angels. Okay, that's a warning right there. Okay, so that means you definitely need to perk up your ears and pay attention and assess whether the book of Revelations lines up with other known truth in the New Testament or does not. Okay, because we are warned about people puffed up in visions from angels and that's in Colossians chapter 2 okay then secondly we are also warned about men or angels preaching another gospel and I'm telling you the book of revelations it is another gospel there's some crazy stuff in there right and uh, like for example it talks about salvation by works it talks about um, not even trying to get people to repent like in the last chapter it talks about um, you know, Jesus re rebuking and vomiting out of his mouth those who are lukewarm. Okay, so there. this is another gospel. This is not the same gospel as we see in, or in other places in the New Testament, especially in the gospels. Okay, we have a different John and different Jesus in the book of Revelations. John and Jesus were very intimate. 
Okay, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. He doesn't change. John and Jesus were extremely intimate. John referred to himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. John was the one who laid his head upon the breast of Jesus at the dinner table. Okay, so John and Jesus, there's no fear between them. There's intimacy. There's closeness. There's affection. There's love. There's trust. Um, whereas in the book of Revelations, Jesus is terrifying and John falls down as though he's dead because he's so terrified of the Jesus he sees. Well, um, John has already seen resurrected Jesus, okay? And he didn't freak out and fall over dead when he saw him any other time, okay? So this is a different John. This is a different Jesus. Jesus in the book of Revelations is terrifying. Okay, number four, you have ungodly saints in the book of Revelations. Okay, Jesus told us, how how we're to be we're to be perfect as our father in heaven is perfect and what he said in matthew chapter 5 is that we need to love our enemies we need to bless those who curse us we need to pray for our enemies do good to all people right so we're to pray and do good to people who hate us who do evil to us who persecute us we are to um, repay evil with goodness okay and jesus said that the perfection of our father is that he loves even his enemies. He sends sun and rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay? And, and then we have examples of how we're supposed to treat people who martyr us. Okay? Jesus, after he'd already been tortured, after he was already in the process of dying, he was, the, the act of murder was already in process. Okay? I'm referring to He's already been whipped and beaten and all these terrible things have happened. And then they just freshly nailed him to the cross. Okay, so he's in the process of dying, right? It has begun. His murder, the act of murder has been commenced. And what does he do? He prays for his murderers. Okay, that, that is a proper response to, to evil being done to you. That is a proper response to being martyred. Jesus was martyred. Okay, look at Stephen. Stephen, they were stoning him to death. Like he's in the process. Stones are pummeling him. He's already in the process of dying. And what does he do? He prays for his murderers. So he was a true saint. Okay. A true saint loves his enemies. A true saint prays for his enemies. A true saint blesses his enemies. Okay. Whereas in the book of Revelations, you have these ungodly saints and they're wanting the blood of the people who martyred them. Okay. Those are not saints of Jesus that we know, that I know. Those are different saints. Those are ungodly saints. Vengeance is not, has no place in any saint. Vengeance is not of the Spirit of God. It's of the Spirit of the devil. All right? Then number five, um, we see that Jesus from the Gospels, he's a redeemer from sickness versus Jesus in the book of Revelations. He will cast you into a sick bed resulting in death. Okay, Jesus will never do to us something that he redeemed us from. He would be double-minded and the kingdom of God would fail. All right, so anything that Jesus ever redeemed us from, he's not the author of it. He's not the source of it. Neither is Father, neither is Holy Spirit. Everything that Jesus redeemed us from is from the devil. Jesus redeemed us from sickness. Sickness is from the devil. Okay, Jesus will never cast anybody into a sickbed. Um, Sickness is an enemy of his. Jesus bore all sickness. He took stripes on his back. He redeemed us from curse. So he will never bring something upon somebody which he has paid the redemptive price for. Okay, so that is a lie. Okay, number six. Jesus is the redeemer from curse. Jesus bore the curse for us. Jesus fulfilled the law and bore the punishment of the law, which is the curse. He redeemed us from the curse, having become a curse for us. Amen? Okay, so he set us free from curse. He is opposed to curse. Curse is an enemy of his. Curse is from the devil. Okay, so Jesus is the redeemer from curse, whereas Jesus in the book of Revelations, he's going to undo these seals and pour out bowls of wrath. Okay, wrath and curse are the same thing. Curse, wrath, wrath, curse, same thing. Okay, wrath and curse... It's just an affliction of evil. Jesus will never, ever pour evil upon the earth. He will never release evil upon the earth. Jesus is the, the answer to evil. Jesus is the redeemer from evil. Jesus is the redeemer from curse. Jesus is the redeemer from wrath. He will never pour out bowls of wrath upon the earth. That is a lie from hell. Okay, number seven. 
Okay, well, we know Jesus, he is the redeemer from death. He's the answer to death. Whereas in the book of Revelations, he's going to bring forth slaughter to the point that there's going to be blood up to the horse's bridle. Okay, Jesus came to this earth to destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil. Okay, so Jesus is never going to bring forth death and destruction. He is the answer to death and destruction. He is the the um, means of rescue from death and destruction. He's not the author of it. He's not going to bring it forth. He's not going to pour it upon the earth. That is a lie from hell. Okay, number eight. Okay, redemption from law versus celebration of it. Okay, when you look in the book of Revelations, you'll see that there is some celebration of the law. And there's the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, that is not, the law will never be celebrated in heaven. That is a lie. Okay, the law is part good and part evil. Um, the law, it actually multiplies sin. It multiplies death. It causes curse to multiply. The law is the ministry of death written and engraved on stones. Jesus was born by a woman under the law to redeem those who were in the law. Okay, everything that Jesus redeemed us from is not from him. Okay, period. Everything that Jesus redeems us from is not from him. He redeems us from law and curse. He redeems us from sin and death. He redeems us from curse. He redeems us from sickness. Everything he redeems us from is from the devil. Okay, the law, it actually separates us from Christ. Um, people who go back under the law, they have... Um, Christ will profit them nothing. They have fallen from grace, and Christ will profit them nothing. Okay, the, the law absolutely separates you from God. Anything that separates you from Christ is not from Christ. Okay? So Jesus is the answer to the law. He's the redeemer from law. He's not the author of it. The law will not be celebrated in heaven. Period. Okay, number nine. Okay, death is an enemy of God. Jesus came to destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Okay, that's the position of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, the book of Revelation says they're going to sing the songs of Moses in heaven. That's a lie. The songs of Moses celebrate the, 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 the death. The horse and the rider drowned in the sea. Are you serious? <laughs> no song of Moses is going to be sung in heaven because the songs of Moses are celebrating death. They're celebrating, you know, the the evil works that were done in Egypt, destroying the horse and the rider and various other things. So we'll take a look at that. But death is an enemy of God. And any song that celebrates death is not going to be in heaven, period. Okay, number 10. Okay, Jesus is the savior from torment. He is a savior. He, um, like in Luke 9, 56, he said, The Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Okay, Jesus came to save our lives from destruction. He wants to save us. That is his mission in life. He's a savior. He came to save us from torment, save us from wrath, save us from curse. Whereas in the book of, the Re of Revelation, the smoke of their torment ascends before the throne of God forever and ever. Okay, That's not heaven if torment is, is wafting up before your nose forever and ever. Okay, who could possibly savor torment other than the devil himself? The devil does savor people's torment, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will never savor the torment of anyone. Jesus comes to save us from torment. Okay, so all that's a lie. Okay, number 11. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the evil purposes of the book is to cause Christians to accept plagues instead of resisting the devil and making him flee. So if you believe the book of Revelations as it's written, then then you're going to be inclined to perhaps celebrate or welcome or not fight against, at a minimum, not fight against plagues when they come because you're thinking, hey, the end times are here. I'm about to get raptured. It's looking good for me. I'm going to be raptured. Let all these people pay. Okay. Well, that's that's what the devil wants to do. Have us not resist him. Okay. We are to resist the devil. Every plague, every sickness, every disease, all stealing, killing, destroying, all of those evil works, these are of the devil. And the devil's trying to get us not to resist him because we have the authority and the power to stop him. And that's exactly what we need to do. All right. Number 12. Um, the book of Revelations has the devil's signature in it, just like he has in Deuteronomy. And basically what he says, you know, that anyone who adds or take a, takes away from the words written in this book will be cursed. That is a lie. 
Okay, and obviously somebody forgot to tell Jesus that because Deuteronomy says something similar, yet Jesus was rejecting and correcting things that were written in the book of Deuteronomy. So Jesus, he took away words that were written in the book of Deuteronomy. He changed words, corrected words that were written in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, so this is a fear tactic of Satan. He's trying to get you to think that you're going to do some blasphemous deed by rejecting the book of Revelations, that you're going to get cut off, you're going to be marked by the beast, you're going to be burned forever and ever and ever. Okay, so he's, that's a fear tactic of his, um, putting that proclamation, that curse will come upon you for adding or taking away from that book. That is a lie. Okay, in fact, if you don't, if you don't reject many things in the book of Revelation, then you're setting yourself up to be cursed. Okay, and that's a huge risk. Okay, then number 13. I'm going to touch on rapture. Is rapture true or untrue? Okay, that's very simple. It is true. How do we know it's true? Because Jesus said so. Jesus said that in the end times, one will be taken and the other left. One will be taken, the other left. Okay, there's the answer right there. It's extremely simple. One will be rescued, the other will not. Okay, rapture is true. Call it what you want. Um, what I call it is Jesus will come right before destruction arrives. Jesus will come and rescue those who know him and trust in him. And those who don't know him or trust in him, then unfortunately for them, they're going to suffer harm. Okay, so it's the same way all the way through the Bible. Somebody trusts God, they get rescued, and the other ones don't. Okay, same thing will happen at any point in time when there's a destruction coming, whether it's the final destruction or any destruction between here and the end. Okay, then number 14, I may or may not talk about this one. Okay, maybe talk about the number of the beast, the mark of the beast. Um, I have some ideas here. First of all, you know, I don't give much credibility to the book of Revelation. So um, I'll tell you this though. According to Jesus, there's only one thing that's going to cut you off from God in this life, and that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So if there is any mark of the beast that actually puts you in a, in a position of jeopardy, it's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And so that's the main thing you need to watch out for. Am I, am I holding blasphemous, blasphemous thoughts of God in my heart, and am I speaking them? Like, do you think he's a killer? Do you think he's a torturer? Do you think he's going to come and torture people to where they're begging for death and he won't let them die? Okay, that's what the book of Revelation says. If you're believing that stuff and you're proclaiming that, you're blaspheming God. Because that's not who he is. You're declaring that he's evil. Okay, so I'm telling you, um, the mark, you know, if there's such a thing as a mark of the beast, that, again, always go back to Jesus. There's only one thing that's going to cut you off and it's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. All right? Okay, well that's it for now. So I just wanted to do this little introductory video to let you know what I'm working on. So it's going to take some time, but hopefully this will get the wheels turning. It'll get you thinking about some ideas here. Everything that I've said here, there's scripture to support it. So it's just a matter of time of pulling all the scripture together, organizing it to put it together to, to prove it to you. All right, but you can even research these things yourself already. So God bless you and we'll talk soon.